spiritual chuck here <clears throat> in the middle of the night I was watching a video I made a few days ago and I mentioned wanting a piece of chocolate and I got me a piece of chocolate and ate it and I was listening to this guru earlier today uh, and uh, he was quoting Ramana Maharshi and in his little topic uh, for his video it was on um, it was on being the ocean and not just the wave you know like the wave is the ocean It's not separate from the ocean. The wave is the ocean. The ocean is the wave. It's like the chocolate is me. You know, I'm the chocolate. And it's like <laughs> the wave, the wave somehow wants to identify itself separately from from that which it is. And it's it's the irony of it is is that I think I want something. You know, but I really want everything. And if I got everything, I would know that I'm everything. And I would want for nothing. So you want for everything until you realize you're everything. And then you want for nothing. And I, I, ironically, it's through nothing that we receive everything. Or it's letting go of that something. And you know, some people are more disciplined than others in their meditations. I'm not. I'm not a disciplined person in my meditations. Uh, if I meditate, I do it almost automatically. I don't do it consciously or set aside time or any of that. I just... I do it in the moment, in the now, uh, where I just abide in everything. And I've been doing it pretty much all my life. But I can reflect back into the storage unit experience, the Esparsa Yoga experience. And uh, realized that that peace was really profound. To the point where it really didn't matter what I did. And uh, consequently, I just went and did what was in front of me. Allowed circumstances to provide for me. Took a job that I would have never taken. In a cooling tower in the Exxon plant in Baytown, Texas. And stayed with someone that I would have never stayed with. And allowed circumstances to provide for me. And I'm continuing to do that in this journey that I'm on. Um, although there are times when the wave wants to you know, assert its individuality, it's, and, uh, but it's, the circumstances are so dire, they are limited that it doesn't really work, so I've provided for myself an ocean of opportunity, uh, with very little wave action, you know what I mean? It's like I can't get in the car and go 
make something happen, you know, or whatever it is that people do to try and assert their their waveness, their individuality. I'm in this ocean, you know, and I'm walking along very limited in my movement. And so here I am. The ocean. Surrendering to the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> and the little wave is disgruntled sometimes. It's like the karmic waves of my life or you know they're trying to create this little this little storm you know and assert its its you know its influence on the ocean that's like what does the ocean say to that you know the ocean doesn't even really respond She's there, and she receives the waves back as they try and escape her, her loving embrace. And here I am, back in the ocean again. It's like I'm back in the forest again. And the forest embraces me. You know. <laughs> you following me? Or are you with me? Are you one with me? Are we one together in the mother through the father? You know, it's like the ocean is, is so vast it's incomprehensible. You know, like the father. And yet each wave is like the mother. And in many ways, many, 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 she's everything. Uh, I think they used to call the ocean the father. The Spaniards or somebody. Father Ocean. Hmm. Wow. The mother can get pretty moody, guys. You know? It's like... Like all the karma in the world. But then... The father... The father... Just calms all that karma down. He says, Mother, shut up and get in the car. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Peace. Love. Light.